What's going on everyone? So today I'm gonna to be taking a look inside the Amazon Dash button. Now, if you're not aware, Amazon Dash button is basically a cloud enabled button or Internet of Things device created by Amazon in order to get you to buy their stuff. Ooh. And basically how it works is you set your button up, you order a specific button first. So I ordered the Gatorade button you set it up using an iOS or Android app and you configure it to buy you something. So in this example, every time I press this button, I will order another pallet of Gatorade. Ooh, yay. Just kidding, I haven't set this one up. When you press the button, it connects to your Wi-Fi, and it phones home to the Amazon servers and says, I would like to order one quantity of X, Y, or Z. So their idea is you can use this with toilet paper, with paper towels, with laundry detergent, with food if you're hungry, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't know about the popularity of this device, but it's actually a pretty interesting device. And so I decided I'm going to tear one down. So this is held together with a few screws underneath this sticker and label. Spoiler, I've already done it and I actually just put my label back. Hence why you can see these scratches here. And so this case is this sort of ultrasonic welded type case. And inside the case, you see this Energizer Ultimate Lithium. Uh, if you or I were to buy it, it probably costs more than the actual button, uh, but we'll leave that to uh, the Amazon people to figure out. And there's this plastic cover. So next you can pop the plastic cover off the circuit board. And finally, we can remove the circuit board from the front of the button assembly. Okay. So this is what the backside of the circuit board that we just looked at looks like. You can tell that there's a bunch of stuff on there. Now I think I might actually take a moment and zoom in a little bit so that we can get a better look at this guy. All right, so that's about as far in as I can get without losing focus on this. If we take a look at the parts, there's a couple of ones that stick out right away and a couple of components that look pretty obvious here. So the first one is this big silver box. Now this is actually a Broadcom Wi-Fi module. So this is a single chip Wi-Fi radio. And this guy connects to your home Wi-Fi and sends out the signal when you want to order something. The main processor in here is gonna be this STM32. So it's the shiny one here. And it's catching a lot of glare from the camera, so I apologize. That's a STM32 F205 RG6. And it's a Cortex M3. 120 megahertz, it has a megabyte of flash memory, 128K of RAM, and there's actually an additional SPI flash, which is gonna be the ST25VF something, something, something. That's 16 megabytes. So there's a lot of room for goodies on here. The main processor is an interesting chip because it is in a weird package. This is actually in what's called a chip scale package, hence why it's so shiny. So chip scale packages are basically a direct scaling or a direct mounting off of the die material and there's no plastic case on the outside. So I don't know if anyone is familiar with the Raspberry Pi 2 and the whole little conundrum regarding camera flashes, but it was the same package. So as an aside, the Raspberry Pi 2 had a power supply, which was in the same chip scale package. People like them because they're small and cheap. And when you would flash it with a Xenon or similar camera flash, it would actually reset. So the photons from the camera flash had enough power to reset the power supply. And it may be the case that this is susceptible to that, but it's buried deep within all of this plastic, so you shouldn't have a problem. Either way, this is in a really small package, and I think it has 48 pins in a BGA or a ball grid array. Very impressive chip right there. There's also this small plastic connector, which looks like a JTAG and serial interface. So that's probably how they debug and or flash these if they're not already flashed from the factory. Over here, we've got three really small 0402 LEDs. They're actually three discrete R, G, and B, which together make white. And we have our button here. So that button is the button that you click when you want to order something. There's also a really small micro SMA antenna connector there, which I believe is built on for the Wi-Fi chip, but you can see that it's actually using a small strip line antenna there rather than the external antenna option. 
Other than that, there's a lot of small packages on here, particularly in this area here, which are hard to actually pinpoint what they may or may not be. That is, I mean, there's just a lot of passives, probably power supply stuff. Now there's one more chip on here and I'm actually gonna flip it over so we can take a look at it and I'll discuss the purpose of this. If we look at this chip right here, this small metal package is actually a digital I2S microphone. What this is used for, this is very interesting, this is used as part of the iOS setup. So when you pop open the Amazon Dash button for the first time, you hold the button for a couple of seconds to put it into setup mode, and then you actually beam over your Wi-Fi network data through audio protocol. And I've actually done an in-depth teardown slash reverse engineering of this audio protocol. It's on my blog and I'll link it in the description, but it's fairly interesting. Amazon's managed to encode a ton of information into near ultrasonic audio, which is not groundbreaking, but it's really impressive for this particular application. The only other chip on this side is this one on the top. And I also can't read that, but I'll link the name up here. This chip appears to be a power supply. So this looks like a boost converter for the lithium battery. And in fact, you can see an inductor right there as well. So that's about all there is in this Amazon Dash. But now I say all there is, but really there's a ton of good stuff in here. And it's really actually a pretty impressive piece of technology for being crammed in such a small space. There's lithium batteries, there's Wi-Fi, there's processor. To be honest, I'm not sure how big of a hit Amazon is taking on these, but I'm sure they're losing a fair amount of money on each board. I mean, I know the raw material cost is much more than $5. And so I think they're probably banking on the fact that they're going to be making some serious money due to people ordering through them. Now, I don't know if that's actually the case, but I could guess that that's their end game. Anyway, that concludes this quick teardown. I'll include all the data sheets. As always, leave me a comment or in, in the description. If you like this video, drop a like and let me know what else you want me to take apart.